Vincent, quick interview with Chris, who, well, again, tell us your background first and foremost. Well, I've known you about 10 years now. Yeah, we know each other since the GP450 GP450. So Chris developed, worked at CCM, developed, designed yep. GP450. That's still my daily ride, favourite bike. <laughs> yeah. And the Spitfire as well. Yeah, we had a team there, but yeah. The gestation yeah. period in the in the Spitfire was short, wasn't it? Yes, very short. Well, very fresh. short, yes. So oh, uh, we brought the doors out together for about two months and it was just like an instant success. So yeah, it was, it was great. And so what made you decide to go from designer within a company to sort of standing alone and building your own bike? Yeah, I've always been a always development engineer. So I like to kind of push the boundaries of engineering a bit. I wanted to manufacture parts at the UK, you not know, with the bike. So I've always had an itch to scratch of doing something myself, you know, it's all the manufacturers build a bike to a budget. Yeah, yeah. And they look you have to do the market by yes. So we thought, okay, we're a team of engineers, could be run by engineers and other to help PR people. Let's build a bike to a spec and figure out what it costs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we did. And the, obviously the issue with any bike is finding an engine. Well, it's a small, small manufacturer, you can't build a new engine. So how crucial is finding this two stroke? Is it Dutch? A Dutch engine? Ah, uh, it's Italian. It's so, right. Yeah, so Vincenzo, his next for Ferrari and one engineers. He developed a ludicrous nice vibe also by a Grand Prix engine. A clever bit that, that kind of over interest was the lubrication system, which is mapped across the rear brakes which are fed in different parts of the engine and controlled with, with the ECU. So I thought, well, this gravelly going out and out power with fuses to back uh, the emission standards. Yeah. And I got in contact with him. He was up for the project. We're real like minded people. Uh, and I agreed to sort of develop a road work. Does that make it more rideable than a typical two stroke then, which is a vinyl? Yeah, exactly. This is like. Uh, well, it's more durable for starting, it's just much less oil to feel the low RPF. But uh, because the fuel injection, the exhaust falls, which is about this, uh, it's like the best of a four stroke, sort of big capacity bike at the mid range, and then you've got it comes on like a two stroke within. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we've been able to map it really smoothly, although well, Shaky Bird wrote it, and it says, but not this stack can't have it. Be in the back of the head, so we've, we've developed a map that also does that. And can you select that as a rider, or is it come out of the factory? No, it's what yeah, it yeah, comes out of the factory, but we need to recalibrate the exhaust, solenoid valves, and things like that. But you know, for us, we've got so much development into uh, being able to come onto the power map mid corner, and that's you know, something we're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And who are you finding most interested in this? Is it, is it older guys who had two strokes? Is it even yeah, exactly. yeah, people who grew up on two strokes have not been able to, you know, got into scratch now. And, so when are we going to see an adventure version? <laughs> so, I don't think we're doing an adventure version of no. this because it, it doesn't cost so much to manufacture. I don't think the adventure world accepts something in now it's 20 grand. Oh, you found out with the GP450. Yeah, it was, that, that or do you, you know, looking back on the GP450, it was a boy that had success and all the process failure, but it, 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 it was it's always difficult for a small brand to establish yeah. itself in a big market. Yeah, I think that vibe was because some of the issue with it, you know, it was Pretty much it was stunt, but you know, the people that understood what it was, it was basically a Duro bike with long range tank so yeah. and, it, and if you understood that, there was nothing else like it. But unfortunately, that's, that's a really It was hard to get the message across. I think some of the mistake you see it as an adventure bike, which has got, I like, just picked easy road miles, and it? Yeah. it wasn't, it was an off road bike with road miles. Yeah, exactly. You've come off a GS flat to a nicest rear beach, but it's an off road engine. It was a, you know, it started us out as a race engine, similar to this. And, Oh, it's, it's, it's it was always ahead of its time, I think, the GP450, wasn't it? It was a price point that people weren't ready to to pay because they didn't appreciate the difference between something mass-produced and something slightly more bespoke, I guess, which the yeah. GP450 was. Uh, I think the people who appreciated boss were the ones who were doing genuine off-road adventures around the world because there was, you know, it was quite to try to up the job, but, you know, there were not that many people doing that. So, uh, so, but, you know, the, uh, it's a great legacy to have, though, having that bike. Yeah, I mean, the 400 engines, 400 bikes, so they all went, so, you know, it's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, good luck with this as well, mate. You need to put this chat in. Yeah, good luck. It's up. Fit back there. Fit. But, yeah, we're just here with Reese on your stand. This is one half of the uh, sidecar guys who went around the world on a uh, Honda... Uh, Honda S8 300 ice scooter from sidecar. Right, how many miles? Uh, 34,000 miles. Uh, so it's a very, very, very niche kit for a record. It's not here today. It's not. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. So you, you've upgraded and gone to Euro. Yes. Tell us about what is a Euro and what is this particular one? Okay, yes, yeah, so this is like a Euro gear up, which is like pretty much the only one of the reads, which is like an adventure sidecar, if you like. So they're all custom built in Kazakhstan these days. They're built to order. Um, We've all got two-wheel drive functionality. Two-wheel drive. Two-wheel yeah. drive. Reverse, which is unbelievably handy when trying to get out of the garage. The heritage is like goes back to my 
the ward on the court. So like, but the yeah. technology has moved on a little bit. Significantly, more. yeah. They outsource a lot of stuff these days, so it's like Brembo brakes and that sort of stuff. So selling the Russian motorcycle, branded motorcycle, what, what's ours? What's ha that happening to? Well, like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, when the war kicked off and that sort of thing, Ural was very anti war. So they've moved out of Russia essentially. The main sort of Ural HQ has been for some time in like, Seattle anyway, uh, so in the US. So. I mean, there was like a pause in production for about six months, and then they basically just now back up, back, 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 back in new, yeah, basically, yeah, and sort of, as I said, they were very anti-war, so it's sort of, um, now it's just like, uh, all systems go, the same thing. And your connection is, you, you box in the tours? You yeah, yeah, so I do like it, so we're like, um, I guess, Euro UK and they said, so we're like uh, a dealer for them. So we've got like a, a base in London and the North East, and we're in the North East, and there we do like experience days. We do like one or, one or two day experience day. The, on your uh, uh, Yeah, it's kind of like an opportunity, but we just sort of give it a go because it's just so different to like a solo bike. So it's a, the, the day you kind of start with like learning how to ride them, you do have they are, to They are different beats. They are a little bit. But where can we find that? What's it? French? Sidecar experience top coding UK. Right. And, and so the day that you guys rode out after your flight centre jobs on yeah. your Honda, how yeah. many years ago was that? Mass. We got, well, actually we got back four years ago in January. Yeah. And how does it feel like, I mean, to, to, to go from setting off on a whim on a sidecar to being here as a face Yeah, well, it wasn't our intention. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, we, we didn't think we'd be going for, you know, UK-wide sidecar domination, but it's just kind of happy. It's happy. Yeah, it's a happy accident. Yeah, no, it's really cool. I do really enjoy it, and it's um, yeah, it's um, I don't know, really. When we found out they were going to the UK, and so we thought we'd have to get involved. It's a great adventure to see, still see happening in Evolve. Thank you. Mate. Wish you all the best. I appreciate it. And so we'll see you up in North on one. Welcome anytime, time, Greg. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Okay, just here with Keith from Manus Tours. Uh, to cut me out, follow on Facebook. Now, I've got to say, I love what they're doing on social media and also what they're offering. You've been able to offer rental bikes to go around the NC500. Keith, tell us a bit more about the business and what you've been offering of customers who are flying in. Yeah? Okay, so obviously we, we offer motorcycle tours based in Scotland. We specialise in Scotland, so the flexibility is huge. Um, we do obviously go into Europe to play to that as well. Um, Specialising in Scotland, we offer things like the North Coast 500, which is the bread and butter. Yeah, yeah. like it's, you know, everyone's heard about the top 10 route in the world, hourly. Um, these things change. Uh, we offer obviously different tours, that sort of thing, but even if you're not doing a tour with us, there's things like motorcycle hire, so you could literally fly up to Renee's Dogsies. Yeah, it's on my own. I'm looking by, should we just say, you've got GSs coming in. Yeah, so we're we're in the middle of changing the fleet at the moment, so you might have seen on, on Facebook and things, we're selling off a couple of the, the sort of older bikes, um, just replacing them with, with, with newer fleet, trying to keep things a bit sort of modern. Everything from GSs, so we're looking at maybe like the F750 GS, the 850 GS. Everyone wants the 1250. In reality, they're too big and bulky yeah. and a lot of yeah. new systems. A lot of investment in stock. A lot of investment, yeah. yeah and I'd be good if you dropped yeah, exactly. the first one. So. All right. Um, yeah, on this all. We can find out more, Keith. What's your website? You can have a look. Uh, obviously, haggistours.co.uk, uh, Facebook. We're on Instagram, pretty much every social media platform as well. And we just pick us up, pick up the phone and give us a call. Just keep that for your time. Well, yeah, we're just on the ABR stand with Bryn, who's a managing editor of ABR. Uh, Bryn, I think it's fair to say, when it comes to festivals, ABR festival is now the pinnacle of the festival, the most likely festival in the UK. What? I think. Uh, I think <laughs> evidence suggests that. And so. What's new? What can people look forward to next year, 2023? So, uh, if anyone came in 2022, it's basically more of the same, just building on what happened in 2022. But if you didn't come in 2022, it's we've taken over the Bradley Court Estate in Warwickshire, uh, which is a really nice country estate, and turning it into basically an adventure trail riding paradise. We've got an on-site 20 kilometer long adventure trail, which goes all around the grounds of Bradley Court, which is amazing. There's off-road mission. Uh, test rides for manufacturers, so you can come here and sit on the bikes for the ABR festival. Yeah, all no right, bikes. Uh, guest speakers, film festival, live music all day Friday and Saturday into the evenings. Um, loads of good food, good drink. Yeah. Hush, hush talks. Hush talks. Yeah, uh, and just yeah, very good times. Yeah, there you go. Go. Yeah, I think anybody went last year or this year. I mean, X Live for next year. Uh, are we controversy over the enduro bikes? I mean, that's. I mean, it's so you've basically said no enduro bikes for next year. I mean, I'm, 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 
Oscar Perez will speak first. I don't think that's a bad decision. No. I know it's controversial, but it's controversial. But it's a decision we had to make with any decision that excludes some people, you're going to end up annoying some people. And it's upset to see. The reason we had to make that decision is because basically like, numerous observations on the trail, reports back, and it wasn't just a snap decision made like that. It was when like you know, problems that were happening, it was enduro bikes so, that you know, it's not necessarily sticking to the speed and it's scaring other big bike riders and basically not riding within the own fastest festival, which is it's all about yeah, trying to get yeah, from the joy in and not racing, just having a feet around to the joy in the scenery. No, I mean, I can imagine it was a tough decision because it's it affects people and commercially it's a big decision to make. So I don't imagine the decision was made lightly and no intention was made to upset anyone. No, not at all. Uh, sometimes life is, life is difficult, isn't it? <laughs> so, now, I wish you well for the Christmas, mate. Thank you very much. Always with GT, mate.